Good evening. I am calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, January the 8th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format, consistent with provisions by the state legislature for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, people wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, that those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. All right, so we have, uh, see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. We have all Select Board members here in, in person, in the town staff, so we can take voice votes. And our first item of business is a proclamation. And I'm gonna call that up on my screen and be my pleasure uh, to read this. And uh, after this, I might uh, invite the town manager to make a comment. Whereas Rob DeRosa was born and raised in Arlington, Massachusetts, and whereas Mr. DeRosa was educated in the Arlington Public Schools, attending Stratton Grammar School, Junior High West, and is a graduate of Arlington High School, and whereas Mr. DeRosa has proudly served the town of Arlington for 38 years. Mr. DeRosa worked at the Department of Public Works for his first 13 years, then served as the master mechanic for both the fire and police departments for 25 years. And whereas Mr. DeRosa was integral in the maintenance and upgrade of the municipal fire alarm and radio systems and the remodeling of the fire stations. And whereas Mr. DeRosa has always been a dedicated municipal employee, team player, and resource to all downtown departments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Select Board, thank Mr. Rob DeRosa for his 38 years of dedicated service to the town of Arlington and wish him a happy and healthy retirement. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, if you can make any comments, and then I'll turn to my colleagues for comments and motions. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the Board taking the opportunity to uh, recognize Mr. DeRosa's 38 years of service. He is currently uh, as of now, his retirement, he was our second longest tenured employee. So it's, it's not often someone reaches 38 years of service. And I can definitively say that he did so with a smile. He was just always a friendly face. And I've had numerous opportunities to work with him during my tenure here. And every single interaction I had with Rob was both uh, pleasant, but also memorable as well. He, he was just a, a great individual. And we're losing you know, not just a master mechanic who cared for our fleet as if it was his own. We're also losing someone who had institutional knowledge that will never replace of our sort of fire alarm network before antennas when there were, you know, cables running from pole to pole and underground in conduits. You know, I can think of a handful of projects that I was running myself at different parks or areas even in front of this building where you dig, you find a pipe underground, and there's a wire in it. And if no one else knows, it's, we're going to ask Rob. We need to know if we still need this. If it still connects one building to another, what's going to happen if we pull a fire alarm? Where's, where's the signal going to go? And Rob was always that person. So he was, you know, sort of far more than just a mechanic, just a true team player and would take on anything at any time. So I appreciate this proclamation on his behalf. Thank you, uh, Mr. Feeney, and, and good luck with that. <laughs> Replacing that knowledge, keep your cell phone handy. Turn to my colleagues for the uh, motions, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to move approval. Um, and I, I want to thank you and the town manager for uh, coming up with this proclamation for Rob, who in no way would want anything like this. Um, yeah, different phrases people say, unsung hero, heroine. He, he truly was, and before uh, police and fire were upgraded to technology and the like, he was a master of everything. Um, he had our systems running um, far ahead of, of what they really should have been doing. 
um, as well as he was, he's such a, a quiet, unassuming, nose to the grindstone um, employee. Uh, but I remember going down there and I used to say, I'm here for Rob's Deli because it was all, the only thing he didn't have was the Diagostino's take a number ticket because between police, fire, and the regular town fleet that would line up down there, uh, and I'd be going down with my police scanner or something like that <laughs> trying to, all the channels have changed and it, it was just amazing and a lot of times I would find out afterwards what accomplishments Rob had done because I'd be like, meeting with the different chiefs and I'd say, how the heck are we doing this? And they'll say, you'll never guess who figured out something. And I'd say, Rob. <laughs> and, and that's who it was. So um, I'm very happy for him in terms of 38 years with the town, earning a retirement for sure. Um, can't imagine, I'm, I know I'll see him down there even when he's not physically down there because uh, he's really got his thumbprint on so many things so beloved by every town employee. It's hard to find an individual that you could say everybody really likes and respects this uh, gentleman, but that's what we have. So um, I know I'll still be t bothering Rob, I mean talking to him uh, in his retirement, and I wish him nothing but the best. Thank you. Mr. Hurt. Thank you, and I'll happily second this, um, and want to Congratulate Mr. DeRosa on his retirement and again thank him for his many, many, many years of service to the town. Um, Mrs. Mahan touched on this, but you know, there's so many employees. We know the department heads, we know the board, the town manager, but there's so many employees in this town that do unbelievable amounts of work and to make the town work as well as it does. And Mr. DeRose is certainly on the top of that list, and it's nice when we get a chance, you know, it'd be nice to be able to do this more periodically than when they just reti retire, but it is good to get, give recognition where recognition is due, and um, it really, you know, our, our town staff from top to bottom is really top notch, and that's why Arlington's able to provide the services it does. And I, you know, as you look at this, the roster of DPW workers and, you know, police and fire, I always am comforted to see, you know, someone that I grew up with or I played baseball with it or it was a lifelong resident. And there's a lot of DPW workers who started as a summer job in high school. And I think it's a credit to how well the town treats its employees that someone said, you know, started off maybe part time and said, you know, I want to make a career of this. So again, congratulations on an amazing career. You know, I only tend to Mr. DeRosa and I wish him the best of luck in his retirement. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I also want to congratulate Mr. DeRosa on an outstanding career and, and wish him all the best in retirement and, and uh, happy to support the proclamation. Mr. Dickens? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to support it. I've listened to three people who grew up in Arlington and really knew the guy, so I've learned a lot about him. I mean, I did not grow up here, you know, so I, I, but I think it's always a good sign, you know, when someone isn't in the news, you know, um, and, and is doing a good job in the background. So um, even though I don't know you, Mrs. DeRosa, I wish you the best, I mean, and, and seemingly, I mean, you, were, you are a really good guy, and hopefully you'll be around in some capacity for a long time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. DeRosa. If someone persuades you to watch this, um, <laughs> we, uh, we are so grateful for your service and uh, wish you the very best in your retirement. Well deserved. And so uh, It sounds like Mr. DeRosa has to continue to stand by his phone just in case we dig up any wires. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with that caveat. <laughs> Thank you. So on a motion to approve the proclamation by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, thank you. Item three for approval, the Hamantash run on March 24th, 2024 from the Center for Jewish Life. Um, do we have anybody representing the organ applicant on Zoom? I think we might, yep, coming in. Yes, uh, I'm here. Hi, good evening, Rabbi. We never know which one of you we're gonna get. 
<laughs> keep us surprised. Keep us keep us guessing. Uh, thank you very much. We have your materials in front of us, but for the benefit of the public, you could just outline what the request is. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, just while I have everyone here, I just want to thank you um, for approving our uh, menorah lighting that took place in uh, in the Arlington Center. It was it was really beautiful, and people really appreciated it across the town. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, we uh, we we would like to. We are asking. We uh, we're applying for a special event. Um, we want to do a, a a run, a 5K, um, that will take place on March 24th, Sunday, March 24th, uh, from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, we'll need around an hour, so from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. for setup. Um, we have. I believe we sent you the route. It's a, it's a route that that. Um, that has been done before and was approved by Marshall McCloskey in 2014, um, running with Friends 5K. And uh, I, uh, I actually I brought this route in front of, to the APD, and they they let me know that they that we have to first um, come before the town, and that the town, um, if approved, the town will send it over to the to the Arlington Police Department to be, for the route to be approved. So. That's what we would love to do. Again, this is Sunday, March 24th. Great, thank you very much. I will uh, turn to my colleagues for any questions, comments, or motions. Oh, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Deacon. Uh, so so we're, uh, to um, the rabbi, we're not closing the, the, the bike path, to, right? I, the question, I think, is the question, are we gonna close, yeah. are you asking us to close yeah. the bike path? No, yeah, right. Do um, I, You know what, I don't, I, the route that I sent, I. We have, I have to let, you know, it's, it's not going to be a big, you know, this is our first time doing it. If we were to get approved, um, we're not looking at more than, um, 60, 70 people. I don't think the bike path will be, will need to be closed. Um, but I, I believe the first part of the route is going up Mass Ave. I think if that's what you're calling it, like towards Cambridge before we, before we make a right hand turn towards the bike path. Um, so I'm not sure I, I wasn't certain what the you know we need obviously need the police presence i don't know if that what that entails um in terms of um shutting anything down or just um just making a lane um i i'm i'm not sure as to that okay you know and so when will you be sure i mean i guess you need to probably get a bit is it, it a matter it, of us giving the go ahead and then you you become sure of this I mean yeah, yeah so 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 the uh, the 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 lieutenant at the Arlington Police Department told me that the town needs to send them the route and that then they will they will look it over and and uh and uh, and come out come out with details of what needs to be done if they approve it you know um I'll stop at this point mr I'm sorry. I'll, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I'm going to stop questioning. You know, I see another question. Are you, you, good, you good for now? Yeah, I'm good for now. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Hurd? I mean, I would just say, I don't think based on the volume, it requires the bike path to be shut down. But I just want to, as I look at the route, like, you know, you're coming down Brooks and Lake, the assumption is that whoever's in the race at that point would stop and wait for a walk signal, right? It's not like, obviously, as you're going through it, busy intersections, it's not going to be a continuous route, route. And I just want to make sure that that's the understanding. Because sometimes with these 5Ks, yeah. we do it, you know, there's a route where people just keep on going. But, I mean, certainly that particular spot would require whoever's in the race to, you know, safely stand by until they get a walk signal to go across. Ms. Yeah, Martin, I believe. Something? Yeah, I just have an update. Yeah. I had reached out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, board had, Administrator uh, Ashley Mark. I had reached out to the police department and heard back from Corey late this afternoon, and he did advise that, given the size, the smaller size of the race, that if it was suggested for them to use the AHS 5K route, that would go from the bike path around the reservoir and kind of eliminate the bike path. Hmm. I don't know if that's something that maybe the police department may have reached out to you about, but um, they were looking for the route. They told them that um, the concern now with the small number combined with the detailed requirements, they might be spending the majority 
of the fee money on two details that would be required for that. So it would eliminate a smaller path if they did not use the bike path, just as a suggestion to the board. So that was so that that would require fewer fewer details. Correct. So so Rabbi, is that um, would you like to you know I'm happy to put this on the if you want to table this for another meeting to consider that uh, could could save some some cost. Um, it's up to you at this point if you want to proceed now we can or if you'd like to consider the alternative path and look into that uh, we could we could put this on for our next meeting sorry I, i'm just looking at the map could do you mind mentioning again what the alternative route that was dis, that was uh discussed Ms. Uh, Ms. Mar okay and, and, and uh, rabbi can you hear Ms. Mar uh yeah, sorry, over I the have zoom a microphone. uh yeah okay. yeah cool. <laughs> So the route that the police department had suggested was the AHS 5K route that goes from the bike path around the reservoir. Um, that would not require a police detail, according to the police department. So that may be something. Oh, so the, the bike path around the reservoir, you mean around Spy Pond? Um, no, the reservoir. So it's... Um, Arlington Lexington Line. Correct. Reservoir. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. So it, would, it wouldn't be an East Arlington route. It would be. Um, it's. I don't have the route in front of me. I don't. I'm. I'm not positive on the route that the AHS 5K does. It was, just. I could pull that from when the board approved it last. Yeah. Um, the small number combined with the detail. Um, it says that if you had used the original one that you had requested, that it would require two details. Um, to hold traffic across major crossing points. The route around the res doesn't require details. It would probably be minimally disruptive to others on the bike path. Um, right. Again, that's up to the board and the applicant, but that was just a suggestion by the police department. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Mark. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dickens, yes, because my concern about the bike pass is that this is on Sunday, three to four, you know, so, so in the, the earlier, the previous time we've dealt with the bike pass has been earlier on Sunday morning, you know, um, and that asked for a closure. This isn't asking for a closure, and I'm fine with that, although then there's a safety issue, you know, um, 70, as Mr. Hurd said, I mean, it's not a big volume, I mean, so, so it's, it's not really that big a concern, you know, um, it's just something to, to, um, to flag I me mean, because it seems to me if we're talking about the height, the Arlington High 5K run, if they're going from the high school to the bike path, then they're still going to be, I'm sorry, to the res, they're still going to be on the bike path for a shorter amount yeah, of time. A shorter, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm so. going to try and find that route. Yeah. So, so it's more so just pointing out concerns. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm positively inclined on this, you know, so. uh, on this route, yeah, yeah, okay. or, yeah or, or yeah, the, the height. I'm positive client towards their, their request being regardless of, okay. I, mean, I do think the uh, proposed one is better, you know, but I will go along with whatever. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Hurd, you have further comments? Yeah, I, I just said, I mean, I've run in, I'm not in 5K shape right now, but I did run in one for the uh, Summer of the Homeless Coalition a few years ago. And I think at the turn, at the same time, at that time, they think you'd have a concern and, but I think this might be one of them that you're talking about that was earlier in the day with less um, less foot traffic on the bike path. I, I mean, I actually, I really like the route that we took there. I think it started on to high, went to Mass Ave, went down, then you get on the bike path over near Downing Square. Um, I didn't find that, and that, that was a much bigger race with more participants. I didn't find there was a lot. We didn't shut down the bike path. I didn't find there was a lot of conflict because after the starting, I mean, this isn't the Boston Marathon where everyone's been training all year. After, once the starting gun hits, it start, tends to really spread out participant-wise. And I think, you know, it was, it was never more than one person kind of plugging along on the right side of the bike path, which you might see anyways. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about using the bike path for safety and, you know, inhibiting anyone else's ability to use the bike path. That said, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, this route, there's a few things, and I think we, I trust the participants in the APD to make this safe, but Orvis Road, for one, I mean, when cars are parked up Orvis Road, it, I mean, Unless, I don't know if it's the intent that they're going to run on the sidewalks, and if that's the case, then great. 
then I, I, I think safety concerns are, are really allayed there. But I think using the bike path, for me, actually provides sort of a safe alternative and, and kind of makes it it's a little more comfortable in my mind. But that said, I, I understand the concern. And just outside of, I guess, this one application, I, I think this kind of strikes something that maybe we as a board come up with a 5K route and say, mm -hmm. oh, you want to do, f we figure out, talk to APD and, you know, town staff and say, all right, this is the safest way to do a 5K in the town of Arlington. And where an applicant comes in and say, all right, you want to do 5K? This is going to be your route. And um, these are the time frames that we uh, approve them in. And you know we don't obviously have to have this in place for this one this one application, but I think this is that's just something that would be prudent because I think whoever's doing a five five k in town isn't necessarily concerned where in town that passes through. So I think that that would be something to look in as a board to work with town staff to put in place as a policy. I like that idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. Huh? Um, you know, it occurs to me too, and I'm, th I'm thinking. Um, you know, I had initially suggested to the rabbi that we, you know, we could table this um, if you're if there's an interest in considering another route. But we would, you know, to do another route, I think we'd probably have to have an application with that route plan submitted anyway. So we'd be coming back in another meeting at any rate. So I might suggest to my colleagues that one question for the board would be: um, Do we feel comfortable approving this route? Today and then the applicant could come back and you know with it with an amendment to a different route at a, at a subsequent meeting, um, or you know and if the board would would rather not, then I think you know we just wouldn't, wouldn't have any motions, and, and then I think the, the applicant would have their their guidance about about a route. Mr. Hurd, I think given the size of the anticipated participants, I'm happy to approve the road so the organization could start publicizing the event and at least know that it's going to happen on that date. And then, as they discuss this with with uh, APD, if there's a better route that makes more sense from a financial standpoint and safety standpoint, then they can certainly come back, knowing that they already have this in place for that date. Is that, um, you, that was a motion, uh, approved. motion to approve. Mr. DeCorsi? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that motion. I, and I think, given the timing, it's important probably to have the date out there that it's going yeah. to take place. Yeah. And I think not knowing the number of details, because the other crossing here on this route is, is across Pleasant Street from Lombard, and that's, that's a busy intersection as you head yeah, back yes. to the community center. And it may be an issue with the number of details that, that, are, uh, that the police department comes back with. You might prefer this other route, but I think it's important for you, Robert, to have the date that you'll know it will take place that day, and, and um, we yeah, can- absolutely. We yeah. can hear yeah. back on, on the specific <coughs> routes. I'll support Mr. or second Mr. Hurd's motion. Any further comment? Can just make one more one question? Of course. Mr. Hurd. Uh, and Rabbi, is there, is the timing of it, was that specifically set or was it just something that you just said, all right, you know, we're going to do it at 2. If it yeah. made more yes. sense to do it at 10 or? Right. So it was, it was specifically set and there was a couple of reasons. So the technical reason was is that I, I'm just starting to get to know this whole world of running of professional of like five Ks. And so you need to, you need to have somebody who, who knows how to set it up and, and, uh, the, the timer and, and they, they give people, um, uh, they give people, you know, so they, that they, they're timed as they're running. So the guy who's helping us, this guy by the name of John, he has like two other runs going on across Massachusetts earlier in the day. That's number one. And number two, and this is why I was excited about this route that we found um, that it's, it's actually, it's a Jewish holiday Purim, um, where people dress up. It's sort of like a, a Halloween, uh, for in, in the Jewish, uh, tradition. And so we were actually planning at the end of the run, I rented out, uh, the Masonic Lodge, which is right there on Academy street where we have a, we, we annually have a Purim party. So we wanted just like the run to end at 4 PM and people go straight to the party at the, at the end of the finish line. That's the only reason why the route was like, oh, this is perfect. But obviously, I, I'll, I'll go and confer with the, with the Arlington Police Department 
And if it just it's if it's more prudent, if it just makes sense on on multiple fronts to change the route, of course we'll do that. All right, I think we have a good we have a good plan, um, and uh, and thanks for the additional information. It sounds like fun, um, yes. so uh, I think we're set for a vote. So on a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Good luck with your event, and let us know if you need to uh, come back with any changes. Thank you, and and uh, just to, so just to follow up, the, you'll you will send the route over to the police department. Is that some, or they already have it? Some of both, I think, yeah. Mr. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Feeney? Yep. Rabbi, I think what we would do through the board administrator is send you the route that's being referenced. I believe it's the one that is often used by the Arlington Education Fi uh, Foundation for their okay. annual 5K, which hosts you know, approximately 800 runners. Uh, and a large portion of it is on the Minuteman commuter bikeway, but does loop back on the Mass Ave sidewalk. There are no major crossings because it is very circular. So I think it is a tried and true route that we, that we have a good map depicting it. And once we confirm that that is the route, we'll be happy to share that with you via email. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Right. Okay, and that moves us to, um, I'll just make one final comment that I, th I think I like the idea of a, of a board 5K route, and I might nominate the board member who's most recently run a 5K <laughs> <laughs> by his own admission to chair that event. <laughs> chair that. I mean, that was like four years ago, so uh, that's not a good look for the board. Yeah, <laughs> it's been 20 yeah, for me. Okay, so uh, for some of us, it might be never. So yeah, <laughs> It's a big deal to get those routes certified, though, right? Like they get the stamp of approval, so oh, yeah. it, pre it pre does make sense role, to have yeah, something yeah, to yeah, offer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Erd. Okay, we item five, a renewal for a contractor drain layer uh, license, and that from the D. Alessandro Corporation in Westbridge Water. Consent, That's on the agenda. consent agenda. Oh, that. Thank you. Insist. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm just skipping right ahead. So that that item I just mentioned is part of the consent agenda. <laughs> Prior to that is the minutes of meetings from yeah. November 20th, <laughs> December the 4th, and December the 18th. I'm so excited that I just got ahead of myself. And a reappointment to the tree committee, uh, namely Mr. Stephen Moore. Term to expire 131 of 2027. Now, any uh, motions or comments on this consent agenda? Move approval. Mr. Diggins. Second. All right, any further discussion? With gratitude to my colleagues for keeping me on my toes, uh, the, <laughs> we have a motion to approve by Mr. Dickens. It's your Diggins. anniversary. It's yeah, seconded, seconded by yeah. Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Now we uh, are at open forum. This is a time for the public to comment. If you are in Zoom and wish to comment in open forum, please raise your hand in Zoom at this time. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. I believe we have a hand raised by Greg Dennis. That's correct. Go ahead and bring Greg into the meeting to Zoom. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a tickle. Good evening, Mr. Dennis. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, Mr. Diggins invited me to speak tonight and to say a few words about someone our community lost last month. As, as you may have heard on December 9th, longtime Arlington resident Paul Paravano passed away. Uh, Paul lost his sight at an early age, but he didn't let that hold him back in life. He worked for many years in public relations at my alma mater, MIT. In this capacity, he interacted with community leaders and local, state, and national elected officials. He made many contributions as a disability advocate and volunteer in ver various committees. In Arlington, Paul served on the Disability Commission and on the Election Modernization Committee, where I worked alongside him. Uh, in his time on the Election Modernization Committee, uh, Paul was a kind but determined champion for better voting options for blind and low vision residents. His personal story of being unable to vote independently uh, due to technical issues with an uh, accessible voting machine raised our awareness of a serious issue affecting voters statewide. 
And of course, he was very dedicated to his family. He and his wife, Martha, settled in Arlington in 1994 and raised two daughters here, one of whom works in Arlington Public Schools today. So I know we will all miss Paul and his services to our community. And um, thank you for letting me say those words. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dennis, for that. And I don't think that this constitutes uh, acting upon or making a decision if, if for the chair to, in, to beg indulgence to, to comment. Uh, Mr. Parvana was, was my neighbor a block or two away up in Precinct 12, and those of us there knew him to be uh, everything you said and more. He was an extraordinary individual, a wonderful neighbor. Uh, his wife, Martha, is also a very dear person. His family is very dear, and our thoughts are very much with the family as they, they mourn this uh, incredible loss and celebrate a life very well lived of service to his community. Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, it, and if, if you don't mind, thank you, Mr. Dennis, for, for uh, presenting those words uh, about Paul, and, and uh, Paul's daughter, Ellie, was a, um, a teammate of my daughter, Megan's, in, in uh, athletics, um, they played basketball together at Arlington High, and, and Paul went to every game, and Martha would sit with him, and, and he would take it all, and she would provide play-by-play -play for him, and, and he was just so engaging, and, and just a a wonderful, wonderful person, and, and he had such a remarkable career. And I'm glad, Mr. Dancy, came before us to, to present those words tonight because they, these words don't really truly reflect how, how what a special person Paul was. I worked with Paul uh, a little bit on the Election Modernization Committee, and, and so you know, I knew that Dennis would do justice to his memory. And there was a good article in your Arlington. So thanks, um, Dennis, to me for for your words, mean, and thanks, um. Paul for all the work that he did and um, all the best to his family in this difficult time. All right, do we have any other uh, people who'd like to speak for open forum? Please raise your hand in the room or in Zoom. Okay, seeing none, that will close open forum and we'll move to traffic rules and orders and other business. Uh, item seven, I think uh, uh, Ms. Murray can bring in Ms. Swan. Uh, we have memos from the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, hey, good evening. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, you very much. Hey, very good. Um, and uh, acknowledge my colleague who serves on the on the TAC as well, Mr. Diggins, and uh, appreciate your your work as always. And very uh, delighted to get these two memos with your good work. Um, if you want to just give us a quick summary of of uh, for the public's benefit of what's there, and then we can have a discussion. Sure. Um, the first memo that we are sending over has to do with Dow and Rhinecliff. And um, I think you, you probably are familiar. Dow Avenue heads east. And when it hits Rhinecliff, there's a break. And about 100 feet up Rhinecliff, Dow resumes again. And there was some concern from residents that people who were trying to continue on Dow were taking this corner very fast. It's right around the corner, of course, from Dallin Elementary School. And there was some concern that um, there were some obstructions uh, of the, the crosswalk at that corner. And so um, our working group went and observed, took some pictures, and had some short-term recommendations that I'll list out here, such as, of course, trimming the tree branches back that are obstructing the crosswalk. Um, replacing a blind drive sign with a retroreflective pedestrian crossing sign as uh, the pedestrian crossing seems to be a higher priority. Um, there is a dead maple tree on Rhine Cliff that also kind of obscures the view of pedestrians at the crosswalk ramp. And if that could be removed, that would also, uh, you know, give greater visibility as well as the area around the crosswalk. The pavement is kind of broken up and the paint is not adhering very well. So new retroreflective paint, a new stop bar at Dow Avenue would all um, just make drivers more aware that there is a crosswalk here. And I think that removing some of the obstructions would also improve the visibility. Of course, we always try and think also in the long term and in the long term basis, um, we would suggest doing something such as modifying the angle of the curb or doing a bump out to make that crosswalk a little bit shorter. But that usually happens as 
um, DPW comes through and fixes curb or repaves a street. Um, I don't know if you want to answer or discuss Dow and Rhinecliff yeah, first. Think, yeah, and then go on to yeah, yeah, I think let's 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 pause and, and we can have, have a discussion in the uh, action about this and we move on to the second one. Um, uh, did you have anything else on Dow and Rhinecliff before we, we have a discussion? So um, I, just to frame the discussion with the board, I have a question for, I think, the town manager, possibly town council, um, in that is, uh, do, in terms of what, what, if any, select board action would be required or appropriate for these particular recommendations? Any of them require a vote of the board? Or, you know, we obviously could refer to the town manager with a recommendation, you know, give, maybe give us some guidance, parameters about what our options are here. Um, Attorney Cunningham? Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, I can weigh in on that. I don't think a vote is required. However, to the extent that the board wanted to clarify it, any instructions it wanted to provide to the town manager, it could be useful. Mr. Green? Yeah, I would agree with that, right? We're not changing any traffic rules and orders here or, you know, requiring something that needs to be codified. But to the extent there may be, you know, a recommendation that the board isn't, you know, fully on board with or may, may want to support or not want to support or if they want to support... Uh, the short-term uh, solutions in full. Again, it's a, a vote of support, but you know, either way, these are things that we can uh, operationally make happen. I think that you know, my only caution here would be you know, focusing on the short-term solutions, as Ms. Swan noted, that some of the longer-term build options really need to be taken up in the context of the town's capital plan and a larger uh, sort of roadway project, you know, spot repaving and uh, sort of spot curb line adjustments just are really not uh, cost effective and typically not, frankly, done effectively unless done in the context of sort of a little bit of a larger scale. Mr. Hurd. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I'm happy to support all the short-term recommendations and essentially move receipt of the long-term recommendations. The only recommendation in the short term that kind of jumps out to me is, I don't know who made the determination that the maple tree is dead, but I think Mr. Quig will have to go and <laughs> yeah. go out and make the determination. And if not, I think that would require some board action in the event that Mr. Quig decided that it was not a dead maple tree. <laughs> Very but good. other than that, I'm happy to, to make a motion to support the that the town manager implement the short-term recommendations. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Just wanted to confirm that, as usual, Mr. Hurd is correct on the tree issue. <laughs> confirm that it is well and truly dead. Mr. Diggins? I'm fine. No. Was that a second? Oh, it's second, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, comments and discussion on the, the first motion for Dime Rail? No, I'm wrong. Okay, so we have a motion uh, of, of receipt of the recommendations and a support for the town manager, and I think particularly with the short-term uh, re recommendations uh, by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Ms. Swan, you're uh, up for round two here. Uh, go right ahead. Sure. Um, the second member we're sending over are some other recommendations about Eastern Avenue right around uh, Robbins Farm Park. And there was concerns about speeding and safety in this area. Um, some very specific suggestions that I could get into as to why some were adopted and some weren't. Um, but our recommendation was that the flashing school speed limit signs be removed and static non-moving speed limit signs be put in instead. These tend to break, they need to be reset um, during daylight savings time. And one is not functioning right now because they don't have the parts to, um, uh, uh, I guess, fix part of the um, clockwork mechanism. And so, um, that would just let people know that, yes, it is a school zone and that uh, there wouldn't be that ambiguity of the school zone, you know, sign not uh, lighting up during arrival and dismissal times. Uh, the other thing we observed was that people did tend to go down the street um, and speed a little bit. 
and that putting a solar powered speed feedback sign on Eastern Avenue um, could help people be aware of their speed and reduce it before they get to uh, Brackett School and the entrance to the park. So those were our two major recommendations. Thank you very much. And I think I'll start once again by just uh, checking out the scope of authority and action here with respect to each of the recommendations and um, to either this require a board um, action or and, and of course also the town manager's um, opinion about about them would be of value as well. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think like the last set of recommendations, uh, what's being sought is sort of a vote of support from the board, but uh, nothing regulatory or uh, definitive, if you will. I will say, you know, I, I think these are both wise recommendations. From my perspective, as I look at them, you know, I, I've seen some recent scenarios where that electronic radar driver feedback sign is actually co-located with uh, the speed limit sign or the school zone sign. And that's something I might advise our engineers to consider here because it is not often we have an opportunity where we have an electrified pole in place that we could make use of. Normally we would go the solar powered route because it's too expensive to bring conduit and a new electrical service, but that is still the preferred mechanism because the solar powered signs would uh, require batteries and bring their own sort of uh, suite of maintenance issues. So I think it's right that, you know, having the static school uh, speed limit sign will be present really at all times and relieve that maintenance issue, the reprogramming issue, and the maintenance headaches that come with that particular older type of technology, but to maybe use that location to satisfy uh, both obligations might be something worth considering. But also, you know, if that's not feasible, then certainly considering locating it just prior to that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn to the board for any uh, comments, questions, motions. Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> Um, move, are we moving approval or move to refer to the um, town manager? Yeah. Receive and support and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then um, I, just because we're at this point, and um, I want to thank the Transportation Advisory Committee, Ms. Swan and others, um, for the uh, traffic uh, speeding data that also was included. And I certainly um, am concerned when it looks at uh, those going, it said 50% go over uh, the 20 mi mile per hour posted speed limit at about 24, 25, and then it said 40% go over the 27 miles an hour, which gets you to 30, especially in the 7 to 8 a.m. Um, and also on the weekends, um, I know, and maybe just because I'm an old lady now, that <laughs> I go very, very slowly up there, and I'm very appreciative when this car is parked on both sides because that's sort of a natural. Um, traffic calming uh, measure, but just as we move forward, and I know this was brought up in the past few years, um, and I know the um, longstanding policy, which can always be revisited regarding speed bumps, but I, I would just like to uh, place before the town manager, as we move forward, um, because we had preliminary discussions, it was either two or four years ago, about as we look at different areas, whether it's Darwin, Rhinecliff, whether it's here at, at um, Eastern Ave by Brackett School, the raised crosswalks. Um, I, I know there was a little bit of discussion on that when some neighbors came in, I believe at Gray and Churchill Road, um, just where, you know, um, the speed of the cars and one of the things that we have much more prevalent than when I first got on the board way back when the Flintstones were in their cars, um, <laughs> is we have a lot of backup speed data and, and um, at different times of day. So I guess I would just, uh, I'm not saying it can happen at this particular spot to me, although this would seem to be an ideal, but, and I understand there may be a reason why we need to continue with sort of the unwritten policy of no speed bumps, no raised crosswalks. Um, intersections, but as we move forward, if, if that's something we could, um, whatever the manager thinks, uh, discussion with uh, Mr. Rademacher, DPW, or others, and then perhaps in the future, a full discussion with the board. There may be another um, solution for around the schools for a great Churchill. Um, and again, I'm not saying speed bumps because I, I do understand um, 
what, what is inherent in all that. But raised sidewalks or perhaps something else that, that people are doing now, engineering designed around uh, traffic calming. So uh, that's not included in here. I know it's something TAC has also, over the years, the Transportation Advisory Committee sort of educated and schooled me on uh, different, different traffic calming measures. So um, just wanted to put that because it came into my mind. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion in, in this one. Thank you for the uh, detailed analysis on Eastern Ave. And a question either for you or for Mr. Feeney. Um, I see the reference here for the flashing school zone speed limit signs. And I know there are others throughout the community. Is, is this something that I don't know if the, the town manager or TAC is looking into replacing other signs because of the reliability issues and, and maybe there are better alternatives now even outside what you looked at on Eastern Ave. Mr. Feeney? So we have not done so yet, but uh, admittedly had the same thought in reviewing this as saying, well, you know, if we're establishing a new standard here, you know, why not be proactive and look to the other locations in town where this may be appropriate? So I do think that's something we would consider, just like when the time comes to rebuild that crossing right at the bracket school that we consider what alternatives are available to us and based on the latest research and guidance. But I do know that the sort of radar feedback signs are sort of now the industry standard have been shown to be effective with respect to speed. So I think that is certainly a great first step. Thank you. Mr. Dickens. So, yeah, I'll just add, I mean, even though I'm on TAC, I mean, I did not write the report. And so I feel good about saying it's a very well-written report, you know, and, and, and the, the, the questions, you know, and responses, I think, have a lot of information in them. I mean, uh, especially I mean, when you might think, well, in one case, they said, well, the cars are parked on both sides of the street, and that makes the line of sight I mean, difficult. But it's like, but it also slows down the traffic, you know, or the speed. And so that would be something that you want. And, and so uh, just I encourage people to, uh, to read through it. And also, um, do, we hired someone to do... Um, the speed and the collected speed data. So that takes a while too. So you might look at it and want to go, well, why did it take so long? And that's because it really was a thorough study, you know. And so um, I'm very proud of my colleagues for uh, the work that they do. And, and it looks like I'll be able to attend the next meeting because I don't have a conflict at all, you know. Excellent. <laughs> the whole meeting. <laughs> Good. Uh, thank you very much. I will also add my appreciation for this. Uh, they, as, as I mentioned earlier, I live, um, this is my neighborhood, and in fact it was a constituent um, in the neighborhood who came to me originally with this request. So um, I'm very happy with the quality of, of the work here, and, um, and I'm really encouraged by, um, by the opportunity, as noted by Mr. Feeney, to, to use this as, a, as an example and a pilot for some newer approaches for, uh, for traffic calming and for safety. So I think it's all really good. Any further discussion? So on a motion uh, by Mrs. Mahana, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. The, thank you, Ms. Swan. Thank you. Have thank a good you. night. Good night. That takes us to item eight. Uh, vote for uh, an appointed town clerk ballot question. And I know I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham in a moment who's prepared a memo for the board and it's available on the town website. I also note with the presence tonight of town clerk, Julie Brazil. Um, Ms. Brazil, do you want to come up and make any comments at all? For, so you're here as a resource? All right. Very well. Uh, Mr. Cunningham, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just prepared a memo for the board and for the public's uh, reminder about how we arrived at this point and how procedurally uh, this is appropriately before this board at this time um, to create a ballot question. It was done by town meeting and it's set forth in the memo when it, what the vote and how it occurred last, last year at the annual town meeting. I also note that there were future considerations uh, in which if, the, if, the, if this were placed on the uh, election, on the ballot this spring and the town were to vote yes, um, there would be some changes required for the Town Manager Act and the, our bylaw to implement these changes. And I think that uh, our great clerk reminded us that uh, she was elected by the town in 2024 for a four-year term. So any changes that we would make uh, would have to uh, consider that her term runs through 2026 and changes could not take place at this time. So the appointment power, if the town were to vote to allow the town manager the appointment authority and take the clerk out of the elected position box, um, that would not take effect until Ms. Brazil's 
term is, is done in 2026. Thank you. All right, at this point, I will uh, turn to the board. I think the question before us, and we have in, in Attorney Cunningham's memo, uh, that the, the fundamental decision uh, question for the board is do we, uh, after the, the vote from town meeting, and I'll note that was uh, uh, the vote language is available, or the, vo the vote titles, it was a um, pretty strong vote yeah, for town yeah, meeting yeah. at the time to, to do that. Um, and now, you know, it's, it's come back around to select board to decide whether we, we put this in the ballot to ask the question to the voters of the town um, to, to, uh, to do that. The, uh, the election ballot question would be, shall the town vote to have its elected town clerk become an appointed, appointed town clerk of the town, yes or no? And um, so I think that's the question before us. So I'll now turn to the board for any uh, discussion and motions. Mr. Hurd. Motion to add a ballot. ballot. Question to our annual town vote in April, as just presented by the chair. Is that sufficient? <laughs> I'll second that. You know, uh, and, and I, mean, I was on town meeting. I voted for the language. I mean, looking at the language, it's a little, a little awkward in that it's like it says, like, "Shall we vote to have it elected?" Town clerk, me. so it's like, well, yeah, we should vote. So then, so, so it's like, but then, but then let's vote, you know. So, so I, I guess if I were to redo the language, I'd say, I mean, he shall we, he um, uh, change me the town clerk um, from appointed to elected because now that's like that's saying like, that's what we're voting on now. We're not really voting on whether we're going to vote, you know. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, it's you know, it is what it is, and and I don't think there's any changing it at this point, you know, and so um, I'm happy to support it. And I guess the other questions I have is like, what is the nature of, of the campaign, you know, uh, but I don't know if that's appropriate for, for um, this venue, you know. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, quite in scope, uh, um, uh, but it's a good question. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think as uh, Attorney Cunningham, you had a comment on the, on the wording. Yeah, just to clarify that the, what, what, what the board is, doing here tonight is that they were directed by town meeting, as, as noted, a vote of 186 to 31 um, to the, the board was requested and authorized to place the following question on the 2024 annual town election ballot. The specific question is, quote, shall the town vote to have its elected town clerk become an appointed town clerk of the town? Yes, blank, no, blank, end quote. So that's the specific language that the board is voting on to, to place that language on yeah. the ballot. Yeah, I realize that, you know, so, yeah, yeah. so I mean, we can't change it. That's fine. Yeah. Correct. But, but I just said, I mean, it's, it, we understand like how it's just a little, it's a little, it's, it's kind of legal ease, I mean, so, and, but, but at the same time, it's like, well, we're not, we're voting on the change. We're not voting on whether we're going to vote on it. And, you know, and, Cause that was kind of like what town meeting was about. It's like, well, shall we put the vote in front of the, you know, uh, the residents, you know, so that was a vote to vote, you know, uh, and now we're, we're, we're saying, okay, we now, here's the vote, and this is what the vote is, I mean, to actually change it, I mean, from appointed to elected. And had I been a little more on the ball, you know, either, you know, when, when we had I mean, the hearing, I mean, uh, I might have said, maybe we might want to have a little different language, you know, when we actually put it on the ballot, but it is what it is. And <laughs> yes. Mr. Gorsi. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and just, it, for the public's benefit, this, <laughs> these aren't Mr. Cunningham's words. These, the, the words yeah. of the ballot question come right from the legislature in Chapter 41, Section 1B. So uh, maybe we talk to Representative Garvey and Representative Rogers and Senator Friedman, but it's, it's where yeah. you know, Mr. Cunningham didn't suggest that he's following the statute. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Generally a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mott. Uh, procedural question? Yes. Um, this goes on the ballot, it's successful. Am I correct that we then need to have a Warren article or perhaps two regarding our bylaws and or town manager act? And if that is the case, is that something we can do at this year's annual town meeting or, and we do have the time since the current town clerks um, contract is for till 2026 or would it be the following year so the question is if this is successful that the town residents of Arlington vote to yes make the town clerk go from elected to appointed does that mean moving forward we need a a town bylaw 
warrant article B and or be a town manager um, warrant article. And then the, the last question would be, is that something we can do this year in 2024, which I'm guessing maybe not, or do we do it in 2025? So I don't know if the chair. Turn to is it Mr. Cunningham as a good three, answer. Correct me. Three, three very good questions now from Mrs. Mahan, right as usual. Uh, the good question, the, the first answer is, is uh, yes. Uh, we, this, we could put this on. The first question was, I'm sorry, remind me of the, I think there were three. Do we need a warrant article for bylaw change? Do we need a warrant article for town manager act change? If so, on either or both, can we do it this year at the annual 2024, or do we have to wait until 2025? Yes, we need, we're going to need, if the town would have vote yes on this and want to make the clerk an appointed position as opposed to elected, yes, we would need a bylaw. To change the, the uh, to, we need a we need a warrant article to change the bylaw, as well as the town manager act. Okay. Uh, could we do it this year? Your second question. Yes, we could put a placeholder in. Obviously, the due date for warrant article submissions is January 26th. That's before the election, so we will not know at that time whether the town wants to do this. If the town votes yes, that will occur prior to town meeting, right? Yes. So we'll, we could take it up at that time. If if the town voted no, there could be a no action taken on that. No action vote. Um, so you could do it that way. You just have to get it in before the 26th of January this year to, to make it, that happen. I would note that there is some time to do this because of what I mentioned at the start where Mrs. Ms. Brazil's uh, term doesn't run until 2026, so there's nothing that the town manager can do to make this an appointed position in any practical manner before that expires. There's no way to, the will of the voters has to run its course. The, Ms. Brazil was elected in 2024 for a four-year term can't make it, even with a vote now, cannot create an appointed position for 25 or 26 until her term expires. Okay, and I apologize, I said 2026, I should have said 2028, and if I could, Mr. Chair, and I don't mean to do this, but I was wondering, since we have the town clerk here, if you have, in terms of effectuating the change, especially around my question of, uh, questions, the warrant articles for bylaw, town manager act, should it be 2024 annual town meeting or some other year and or anything else? If that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Of course. Always welcome to hear, Sorry uh, to hear from no, our, that's okay. from our uh, terrific town clerk, Ms. Brazil. So, um, I mean, I don't think there's a reason not to do it this year. Just, um, I mean, as a contingency plan, if I were, you know, if I died in a car crash, um, it would be easier if it, the things were all tied up. So, I mean. Thank you, don't do that, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yes. saying a prayer for your safety in my head, go ahead. Attorney Cunningham. And Mr. Feeney raises a good point too, um, that the changes to the Town Manager Act would require a home rule petition yep. uh, through the state legislature, so it could be prudent to do that sooner than later. I, I had the same thought. <laughs> really? There's some inside of having my other job. So with those answers, is, I will feel comfortable leaving um, those two housekeeping bylaw warrant article, town manager, home rule petition under the purview of the chair. Yeah, and I think we have at our next meeting, uh, Mr. DeCourcy has suggested to me as an agenda item where we discuss potential uh, select board warrant articles. So I think that'll be a good time and uh, just to make a... Stick a pin in that to the to the town manager and to our town council to uh, consider those, both of those items. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Mr. Brazil. Uh, Mr. Attorney Cunningham. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to the extent that you would like me to work on the home rule petition, if you want me to work with the vice chair on that. But yes, please. Okay. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all right, for you, Mr. Vice Chair? Yes. Yes, it is. Good, Good thinking, Mr. Okay. Diggins. So I was wondering, I mean, would <laughs> Would putting these in a special town meeting um, warrant be an option? Because we do... Like the embedded town special? Uh, yeah, because we do, we kind of open that warrant kind of late, right? I mean, and so, so we could like open that true. after the election. I mean, you know, we could have them all ready to go, but then, you know, we inject, just put it, just a possibility, you know? I mean, so, so, so then to maybe residents, it doesn't look like we're being presumptuous, you know? Uh, um, and so, so we kind of do the background work, but then we have special town meeting injected. And so just putting out this possibility, I don't, I don't care, you know. So that's all. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I think Mr. Diggins suggested it could be done either way. Um, I don't think that's, it, it's really the, how much time you want to allow, and but either way would work time-wise, I believe. Yeah. Sure. So, 
All right. Uh, so, um, any further discussion from the board? Okay, so we have a, a motion to put the question to the voters uh, per the language approved by town meeting, which itself comes from uh, state law. Motion is from Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Dignitz. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you very much for a good discussion to all. And now we move to item nine, a potential vote uh, for the uh, date of the first night of annual town meeting 2024. This, uh, this is, of course, an item that the board previously voted on and set a certain date. I think some additional insight has come uh, to light after some good work by our town council. And I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham to give us a summary of the uh, option before us tonight. I think that, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, originally, the board took a vote on November 8th of 2023 to set our annual town meeting for the fourth Monday in April, pursuant to Article 1, Section 1 of Arlington's town bylaws, which specifically say it's, it's supposed to be set for that date. Uh, unfortunately, that date ha coincides for the first time since 1967 with the first night of Passover. Um, obviously, that creates a hardship for many who celebrate Passover and many who have friends who celebrate Passover, many of whom are either, either participants in town meeting as elected town meeting members or are just simply citizens who participate in the process or are interested in what goes on that night. Um, there is arguably a state statute, General Law Chapter 39, Section 9, that would permit boards in certain occasions, select boards throughout the states, from moving the date of the annual town meeting first night um, despite a town bylaw. I, I think that I mean, I did, it is something that I considered um, at the time. I think that given the timeline of our bylaw in Arlington that was amended in 1988 and 1994, um, this statute dates back to 1969, Chapter 39, Section 9. Um, I think that there's a good chance that the, the state, you know, the board may not have the authority to do it, but it may. Um, I think that there's no, there's no settled law on the issue, um, but I don't think that there's a great risk to the board in acting either, either way. I think that I've been in talks, and I know others have, with the town moderator um, to ensure that if we were to proceed with a first night of town meeting on the first night of Passover as scheduled, um, that all procedural measures possible would be taken to make sure that there are no substantive matters taken up that evening so that no person who is unable to make it that night because they are celebrating that particular religious event would miss anything that they would otherwise want to be there for. I do note that the town meetings procedures committee has recently voted to uh, submit a warrant article to this year's town meeting to clarify Article 1, Section 1 of our bylaw to make sure that it's clear that the select board going forward will have the authority to um, set the first night of town meeting in a way that ne doesn't necessarily have to be the first night, first Monday of uh, for last fourth Monday in April. So if this were to occur for some other holiday, for instance, I know that first night of Passover will fall on the fourth Monday in April again in 2035. But there could be other events that the select board wishes to avoid. Um, and in this, the way the select board was put in position this year, it's questionable whether the authority exists. Going to make a change, the warrant article going forward, if voted by town meeting, would make it very clear that the select board has that authority, has that discretion. And I think that's helpful. Other towns have done that, have given us, they've changed their bylaws to, uh, to provide that clear discretion. But I think reasonable people could disagree um, about Chapter 39, Section 9, and whether the authority currently exists. Um, I don't think that this is one of those legal questions that is, has a right or wrong answer at this stage because it hasn't been squarely addressed. So that's, I'm happy to answer questions, but that's, that's the history as it exists right now. Mr. Hurd. What's, you, is there a suggestion for if we change it to what date, or is that for us to discuss? I think it's for us to discuss. I have an and idea. But would the idea be the Wednesday that falls? 24th. Yeah. Then what day is that? 24th. It would be the 24th of April. Well. Right before, are you going to yeah. make the motion? Because I have a question on the motions. Yeah. 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 Can I just, before Mr. Hurd, could I, Mr. Mrs. Chair? Mahat, please. Just to make sure, 
procedurally, everything is, is, is tied up. When a motion is made, not by me, do we need to, and if I'm overthinking this, we don't have to do it, but should it be a joint motion, two motions? Should we first have a motion to rescind our vote, designating mm. April 22nd, 2024, and then have a motion if the motion is a different night, meaning if it's perhaps Wednesday, April 24th, 2024, should it be combined or am I overthinking it? If that's it, I'm not making a motion. I just have a question on when a motion is made, should it be include both, two separate motions? I'm overthinking it. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Never miss mine. You could do it that way, a vote to rescind the vote. I think the easiest and most clear way to do it would be if the board was inclined to simply take a vote to change the start, of, the start date of annual town meeting from this date, which it currently ex is, pursuant to that prior vote, to this date. Yeah. So, continue, Mr. Hurt? Can, can I, make uh, I think uh, I want to make sure Mr. Hurt was finished, but because sure. you were... Yeah, I mean, I'll make a motion, but if somebody wants to, if people want to talk before, I'd make a motion. Okay. Because uh, Mr. Dickens. Because I, because initially when we hit, talk, talked about that date, I had wanted to be a week later, I mean, to give us more time, you know, because this is a case where we have, I mean, the election coming late, you know, and then town meeting, you know, potentially starting early, which was uh, like three weeks with a uh, school vacation in the middle, I mean, which made it, I thought, very challenging for us to have, I mean, um, um, time for precinct meetings, you know, I mean, also to get the new town meeting members up to speed. I mean, so I would like for it to be on the 29th, because that gives us four more days I mean, to work with for, for precinct meetings. I mean, assuming people aren't going to be available for the first two days of uh, Passover, it gives us that Wednesday, Thursday, and that Friday, I mean, that Saturday, Sunday, which people do tend to use uh, for precinct meetings. You know, and, and it's not going to be, I think, a time issue with respect to how much time we have to get through town meeting, because the latest we would start town meeting would be the 28th. You know, in a typical year where we have only four four Mondays meeting. So this would just be a day later. Meet. And so so I would ask uh, Mr. Hurd if he is going to make a motion to consider the 24th, I mean the 29th instead of the 24th. Well, I mean, I guess I'd like to hear from the board before that then because, I mean, I get everything you're saying. Yeah. I just assume get it going <laughs> the first day we can because yeah. I'm thinking on, on the back end of that. I mean, I think if someone's running for town meeting, then they should be familiar with the warrant anyways. Um, but I, I guess I, I'd turn to the other board members for comment and we'll, my preference is to just go forward on, on Wednesday the 24th and just start cranking. But I think this is something that we would just look to the board and for a quick bit of input before we make a motion. Well, what more important to me is, is the precinct meetings and then we have we have school vacation in the middle, you know, and so so and I think precinct meetings is a good time me for town meeting members, even to the extent they are familiar with the process, to just kind of talk through the articles and I think that can have a beneficial effect on the uh, on the deliberations I mean, during town meeting because people kind of flesh things out amongst themselves as town meeting members and with residents. I mean, so, so it's just such a tight squeeze I mean, uh, between, with three weeks and one week out for, for um, school vacation. Oh. So I'm pushing hard for this. <laughs> That's it. Thank so you. just procedurally too, I think I think Mr. Hurd, well, you know, you, you can listen to make you make a motion. You can also make a motion, and then you know if, if someone wants to. Um, Move to amend it. We can take a vote on that. So you know, there's ways, we, we, different ways we can do this. I think we have not heard from Mr. DeCourcy yet. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah. So it, I, I'm going to hold off until Mr. Hurd makes a motion. But once he makes it, I'll support it. Um, <laughs> in in terms of the term of art, I think being to delay the start of town meeting, um, so we're consistent with the um, Chapter 39, Section 9. Um, and as far as the start date, the thing that concerns me, Mr. Diggins, is we don't know how big the warrant, how many warrant articles are going to be yet because they are, it, it's not going to close. I know my understanding, and Mr. Chairman, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but the discussion with the moderator to date has been, let's start on Wednesday and find a way to start on Wednesday because I think he was concerned about just moving through town meeting. I understand what you're saying, and maybe that's a discussion 
for next year, given where we were here. So I, I, I could be persuaded by the other members, but I, I would be more inclined just to, to support a motion to delay it for two days rather than for the full week. Um, I want to see if there's a, I'll get back to Mr. Diggins, but I want to make sure everybody has a chance to kind of give their first round. Mrs. Ma, did you want to weigh in at all substantively? Um, no, I'm on the fence. Okay. Um, I have some thoughts as well, but Mr. Diggins, you want to go yeah, first? So my point, though, is that I mean, the latest town meeting would normally start if we did I mean, the, the fourth Monday would be the 28th, and this would be the 29th. So it's just one day uh, difference I mean, um, in terms of I mean, when would be the, the latest we would start a uh, town meeting. So I don't think we're in jeopardy I mean, of running into any time limit. I mean, and I do have a solution uh, for that should... We especially need to get the budget out, but that's it. Huh? I mean, I don't know. I, I, it might be much to do about nothing. I, I'm thinking most town meeting members would probably want to get going on the first day, particularly since we're, you know, I'm comfortable making this motion. I think it's the idea of making the town staff and whoever can make it go on the first night to just kind of open and close a meeting is a little crazy. And it, at, the, at the end of the day, if somebody has a problem that we accommodated, you know, members for a religious holiday, then we're just not going to get on board with that person. <laughs> it's just, it, it is what it is. So I, but I do think in this situation where we're, you know, there's some gray area, I think, you know, putting it on the next, next closest day kind of puts us on better footing for someone that complains that as to we're not following the bylaw word for word. And again, I, I hear everything you're saying and I think they're all completely valid and appropriate concerns. I just think what, you know, putting it on the next available day within the normal cycle is more prudent given the situation. And I would note that the 22nd is also my birthday, so I, was, you know, <laughs> I put that out there, you know, in case there's any conflict that Attorney Cunningham thinks that I shouldn't make the motion because of, I want that day off. But <laughs> that's, chap that's chapter 39, section section 40. <laughs> Um, since I think uh, we have some members who are kind of wanting to get a sense of the board, I'll weigh in with my own thoughts on this too. Um, I, I support M Mr. Hurd's line of thinking, and I'm not unsympathetic to my colleague, Mr. Diggins, but I think in terms of, of precedence, uh, to me, town meeting members deliberate and make, do their think, most of their thinking and make their decisions at town meeting. That's what it's designed to do. Um, I think the precinct meetings have value. Um, considerable value and in, in, in fact but it's not you know it's not a uh, official um, statutory <laughs> part of town meeting I think that the system is designed for town meeting members to listen and, and debate at town meeting as well and we encourage and strongly encourage research and discussion before that but I think that's an, for me that's actually an important point point. Uh, and maybe it's a peripheral one but it's not something where I think for me, that does uh, the value that there is in the precinct meetings, particularly with communicating with the community, which is very important. Um, I still think that given that we are departing from the bylaw, um, I am comfortable with, you know, with the statute, uh, the state statute that does um, suggest that we can do this. But uh, yeah, I would like to make as small change as possible. And I think that is consistent with the, the conversations I believe I had with the moderator as well. So that's where I'm at personally. Um, so happy to have other discussion. Mrs. Ahan, you have a I, I, I just wanted to add, um, I want to thank uh, the chair and, and, and town council for revisiting um, this issue, uh, not only for current town meeting members and not only for those of the Jewish faith, because I do know at least one non-denominational um, religion, church, that also uh, fervently observes Passover. And I think for those who may be um, whether you observe Passover or not, if you're thinking about running for town meeting and you're hearing about something, well, the first night is a very serious religious holiday to Jewish and non-denominational faiths, and they schedule a town meeting for that, it might, you know, dissuade someone um, f for running from that. So, um, and, and I, I agree with the, um, 
the motion of trying to get it as close to the first Monday. Um, per the bylaw, until we further clarify it, um, uh, and perhaps we can revisit this discussion again next year. So the April 22nd to April 24th, 2024 uh, date sounds good to me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you. That does that does remind me of, of the discussions that, that uh, constituents and residents of the town um, had with me and some other members of the board that brought this to our attention and I think helped, helped me further understand why the the potential solution of convening town meeting for you know a cursory, uh, almost ceremonial thing, but we don't do business, that might accomplish the objective of not leaving people out of business, but it doesn't really take care of the, of the fact that Mrs. Mahan said that this is a really, really important holiday for many town meeting members themselves for their faith, um, and that's something that I think the spirit of our, of our bylaws with respect to the timing of the town election um, in, in reading reading uh, chapter 39, section 9, also seems to um, suggest that, that we have that ability to do. So I'm really comfortable with that, and I appreciate the members, uh, the town meeting members who spoke with me, and I think really communicated why, uh, why I was persuaded to bring this before the board tonight to give the opportunity to make this change. Uh, Attorney Cunningham? And further to Mrs. Mahan's point, and actually addressing Mr. Diggins's point about if the town meeting this year were to change our bylaw to allow explicit discretion for the select board to set the date. The board could revisit the discussion about when best to start town meeting next year with more freedom to include possible precinct meetings or other issues in later dates. And I think that the, it is perhaps prudent at this stage to um, set a date when, when there is a questionable matter of interpretation of the bylaw versus the state statute um, to set that date for as close in time as it, as it is Required, uh, you know, as the bylaw says it should be. I think, any, um, I think we have a member who's ready to make a motion, but any further discussion before uh, we, we go? Well, I was just going to say one thing and then tell you what I'm going to do. You know, so, so I mean, in I, mean I use deliberation because to me it's the kind of a distinction without a difference. I mean, people are discussing articles, you know, by email and precinct meetings, I mean, and so we could call that discussion education, we could call it deliberation. I mean, I mean, the it used to be where I think people I mean, could only deliberate in person at town meeting. Right now we have lots of options, I mean, and I think it makes for a better town meeting. This is what I'm going to do. You know, you'll make the motion, I will put up an amendment, it will fail, and then I can vote for, 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 the, for the main motion, you know, and we won't end up with a case with me being 4-1 against the main motion. All right. It seems very clear. Sure. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. I think you're up, Mr. Hurd. So I will make a motion. Certainly, and again, I, Mr. Diggins, I understand yeah. and appreciate your concerns, yeah. and I think we've all made a piece on this. To um, amend, I don't know the specific language, yeah, attorney. I think I think had any suggestion. We should use the word delay. To yeah. delay the start of the annual town meeting from April 22nd, 2024 to April 26th. 2024. April 24. 22 to 24th. <laughs> Sorry, I get it. 24th. Trick or dates here. Yeah. We'll, do this, we'll do this one. I just skipped to my, <laughs> right. from my birthday to my sister's birthday. <laughs> April 24th. Did you want to second that, Mr. DeCourcy? You had called that earlier. Yeah, I, I think Mrs. Mahan just seconded it. Okay, yeah. okay, okay thank, you. thank you. I didn't hear you. Okay, so, um, so we have a motion on the table in a second. Do we have any amendments to the motion? <laughs> By any chance? And, and, and I'm hoping I can get a courtesy second. To, um, to, I, will, I will happily second uh, that as, uh, as the amend chair it for to, to, to the 29th. <laughs> yeah. Second. Okay. So we have a motion to amend the motion to uh, amend the delay to the 29th, uh, April 29th, by Mr. Diggins, and seconded. Um, uh, gladly as a courtesy by the chair because he does acknowledge that you have a legitimate point of view and, and these are important matters. Um, so all in favor of, we'll, so we'll, uh, well first of all, further discussion before we take the votes on the motion and the amendment. Okay, so let's vote on the amendment um, pr uh, proposed by Mr. Diggins. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 It is a 1-4 vote. One in favor, so the, uh, the motion fails. Uh, now we will go to the original motion um, that is not amended by Mr. Hurd, and that is to uh, delay the start of town meeting to April 24th, uh, I almost did it, 2024. Seconded by, Mr. De by uh, Mrs. Mahan. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That is a 5 nothing unanimous vote. Thank you all for your, your good work, your good faith, and good discussion. Yeah. At least you didn't have to deal with 13 substitute motions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, right. that's right. There are, there are worse things. Uh, that brings us to item 10, a property redemption of 62 to 64 <coughs> Brooks me. Avenue. Uh, we have our town manager, Jim Feeney, and town council, Michael Cunningham. Mr. Feeney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could, I would also, I believe... Uh, the attorney representing this oh, resident yeah. is in attendance, and if we could promote him to a panelist. I believe Mr. Leone is indeed a panelist. And uh, good evening, Mr. Leone, attorney, attorney Leone. So I'm happy to just give a brief, though. This was a request uh, born from Mr. Leone and his representation of Mr. Avakian. But what we're seeking uh, the board's approval here to do is this is a property that is currently uh, was foreclosed upon and uh, tax taking was uh, conducted by the town so it is technically in the town's possession right now and therefore in order for the prior owner to redeem we would need a uh, vote of the select board to essentially in a way dispose of this property allowing uh, the prior owner whom as I understand and as I'm sure attorney Leone will speak to uh, you know was able to reach an agreement for a purchase and sale with a private buyer to uh, ultimately, hopefully, soon close out a matter that has been uh, longstanding uh, before the town and sort of bring it to a final resolution. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Attorney Leone. Uh, welcome. Any comments you want to make to the board? Sure. I'm we're, my office. We're counsel to Alex Avakian, and the estate of Alex Avakian Sr. and the 64 Brooks Ave Realty Trust. Uh, through a, through, a fam, through a series of family matters, Mr. Avakian failed to pay his real estate taxes for a few years, got behind um, after a series of maneuvering with um, towns outside council, the town ended up taking the property. We've been able to arrange a complicated series of events which would result from the town allowing us to redeem the property to sell it to a private contractor who was going to rehab the property and and then this would allow Mr. Avakian to regain his equity in the home. Um, I've had discussions with um, ter um, attorney Cunningham, his predecessor attorney Heim, as well as town's outside counsel and um, town manager Feeney about this over the course of the last few years. We've been able to structure this and we're hoping to close next week, but an integral part is this board's vote to allow us to redeem the property pending full payment of all outstanding taxes, full cost of the suit and, ex and repayment of all outstanding water bills and any and all expenses that the town has incurred. So we're hoping to do this and gain your approval for this so that we can fully pay the town everything it's owed and everything it has paid so that the town will be in good stead, 100% reimbursed, and Mr. Vakian will have enough money to allow us to help him purchase a new place to live and have some money left over to pay his taxes on that property going forward. Um, we've worked out a scheme, I don't want to call it a scheme, we've worked out a plan to allow that to happen and hopefully allow him to remain in the town of Arlington. His family has owned this house, I believe, since the 1950s, but it, it just fell into um, it, it, into arrears and it became too much for him to handle. And that brought us here. And we're hoping that you will allow us to redeem the property uh, so that we can make this happen. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, a question, so we have in the uh, memo from Attorney Cunningham and Town Treasurer Julie Wayman that um, we have some vote language. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's a long, long paragraph and it's very specific. Does, is it required that a, a member of the board does read this in full, the motion, Mr. Attorney Cunningham? 
Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so the, the chair is looking for a volunteer who would like to, uh, if they would, if they are in favor of this, uh, would like to read this motion uh, carefully, word for word, as it appears uh, in this. And of course, that is, I not presume that the board uh, is in favor of this, but that is what's required if someone wants to make the motion. <laughs> As provided under Mass General Law, Chapter 60, Section 69, I, Diane M. Mahan, hereby move to vacate the <coughs> final judgment entered on December 7th, 2022, in Massachusetts Land Court Tax Lien Foreclosure Case Number 19TL000059, Town of Arlington versus Leo A. Avakian, Jr., a.k.a. Alex Avakian, covering the property located at 62-64 Brooks Avenue, Arlington, Mass. Assessor's Plan 5, Section 1, Lot 14, on the condition that the town receives payment of all amounts due to redeem the tax taking covering the property, which include but not are not limited to taxes and interest to the date payment is received by the town, all charges and fees associated with the foreclosure case, all charges and fees associated with all eviction action, all taxes and interest in lieu of an assessment as a result of the town's ownership, all water and sewer charges incurred prior to and subsequent to the entry of the foreclosure judgment, and any costs incurred by the town while in the care, custody, and control of the property after the entry of the foreclosure judgment. The town must receive payment in full within 30 days from the date of this vote and no later than the end of business on Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, upon payment to the town of the full redemption amount on or before February 7th, 2024, the town will take the necessary action to vacate the foreclosure judgment and withdraw the foreclosure case in the Massachusetts Land Court. Well done, Mrs. Mahon. <laughs> Mr. Dickens. Yeah, I'm second, and I'm glad there's code in place to deal with situations like this. And I have a question <laughs> on my own motion. Yeah, that's fine, um, it's mine. <laughs> no, only because, um, I, and I do, I do want to thank the town manager, town council, and others. I know this has been a, at least two years, if not more, um, issue, as well as uh, I think it was, I thought we were going to have it, had an agreement as of the summer of 2023, and it kind of fell apart, and I appreciate the uh, town's willingness and Attorney Leone, for Attorney Leone on behalf of his client um, to come to this to allow them to uh, redeem the property. Am I correct that, uh, per the language that town council drafted and I inartfully read as, as my motion, that if for some reason, just because we've had so many bumps and other things along the road, that the uh, date of Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, is a firm date, and if that is not met, then that's it, versus we're gonna start this all over again, not just for the town and its employees and, and town council, but also for, uh, I, and I remember Leo Avakian, who I believe was the original owner, um, but for the Avakians and their council. So is, is that what I just read, it says February 7th, that, that's it? Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, yeah. Uh, to Attorney Cunningham. If, if I may. Uh, I'm first, if uh, I. Oh, well, Attorney, we'll start with Attorney Cunningham and then we'll move to Attorney Leone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My answer to that question would be yes. Um, if the board votes to take this action, that is the date by which it needs to conclude. However, if, it, if, if for some reason it were to fall apart and the parties were to seek to create another deal, um, that would have to come back before the board. And, and clearly the board would you know, be sending a message that. Maybe perhaps not. Would, the interest level would be there whenever it's met by the board, but this particular deal has to occur by that date. Thank you. I'm, I'm, uh, Attorney Leone, did you have a comment? Yes. Yes. Um, in furtherance of that, under the plan we currently have structured, we have a closing scheduled for next Monday, the 15th. The town will be paid directly from the proceeds of that closing by the buyer's attorney, and only then will once the town has received its check in full, will the petition to the land court be submitted? And it won't be submitted until the town has received payment in full. At that point, um, your outside counsel, who has diligently pursued this matter, um, will submit it to land court and we will get title back at that point and be able to transfer it on. So Mr. Avakian is out of the property and the town fully owns it at this point. So if this deal should fall apart, 
then the town can do whatever it wishes with the property. And um, frankly, I think this is our last and only chance to redeem. So we're, we're going to do everything in our powers not to let that happen. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and that's good to hear, Mr. Leone. I, I, I want to acknowledge the work that Town Council, Mr. Feeney of Town Treasurer, has done over the years because this, this result, and hopefully this result takes place next Monday because this is all the town has wanted through the years is to be paid the, the taxes that are due. There's recognition that there's additional equity here, and I, and I hope that this goes through so that there are funds available to to, to Mr. Vakian, but th this is, the, the town followed the statute, land court directed when this would go forward. And, and again, I'm glad that we're here, but this, this really needs to, to be it, and I hope it's it. And, and I, I, I hope this, this result occurs because the town was never looking, to my understanding, it's not this, the decision of the board, the town wasn't looking for a windfall on this property. The town was just looking for, it, it, for the taxes, and, and unfortunately there are fees that have been incurred, and, and I, I truly hope that this takes place next Monday um, and, and um, that this, this, what, what is being envisioned here occurs. I, I'm going to interrupt the Mr. Corsi. You're totally right. The town has been extremely fair with my client, and it has never said it wants to keep anything more than it's whatever it's owed, and this is keeping with recent Supreme Court opinion. So the town has been 100% fair and equitable in my client. No, no ifs, ands, or buts with that. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I just said, I'm happy to support this. Um, I'm glad to see language that says the town's gonna, going to be reimbursed for the cost of outside counsel. And, the actions that it's taken. I was trying to catch it. Town, it would have been nice for a solution like this to be, you know, come up with. Sorry, that was one said artfully, but a few years ago, I think, you know, given the housing market in this area, there was a way to do, to clear the liens and for the vacant family to walk away with their equity. It so sounds like they, you know, had they wanted to structure something that kept them in the house, and I certainly understand that. But there's also a cost that we're not going to recover, which is you know the town, the hours of town staff, which we can't quantify. So I just I would like to put it out there that happy that we're able to come to a resolution and that there's a plan to put this matter to bed. But again, it would have been nice for this plan to for some sort of plan to come out a few years ago and save a considerable amount of town staff time that has been expended on this in the past couple of years. But with that, I'm happy to support the motion. Okay. All right, any further discussion before we vote? All right, we have a motion. Thank you for everyone. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Diggins to approve. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's a five nothing unanimous vote. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Thank Leone. you all. We, we really appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That now takes us to, completes our regular agenda. Now takes us to new business. Let us start with Ms. Marr. No new business. Thank you. Attorney Cunningham. No new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Feeney. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. A couple items of new business. That's completely fine. <laughs> Sorry to ruin the flow. <laughs> Uh, you know, I just wanted to take an opportunity because I didn't get to earlier to, uh, you know, offer my uh, thanks to Mr. Paravano for his uh, long and dedicated service to the town's disability commission. I myself had the honor and privilege of uh, accompanying Paul to the Massachusetts Office on Disability Disability Summit back in October of 2022, where we co-presented uh, some of the work that the town had done highlighting you know, our work to promote accessibility in a digital world as Mr. Paravano was sort of instrumental in helping us choose uh, some like Zoom hybrid technology that we implemented that would have been, that was chosen with an eye towards uh, you know, folks with disabilities and serving on our disability commission. So you know, he will 
certainly be greatly missed by the community. I just wanted to offer my thanks to him. Uh, we'll also say that uh, you may have heard that the uh, state revenues are lagging uh, and have for approximately, I think, the, the first six months of the fiscal year. So today the governor did announce some 9C, which are you know, mid-fiscal year budget cuts. Uh, as of right now, the municipal and school accounts, like the, the main aid accounts, have not been impacted, but we are seeing a likely uh, potential impact to the earmarks that are slated for Arlington. Uh, the first that we've heard so far is that for the, I think in the state budget, it's called Arlington Center Park, but it was for uh, preliminary work related to rebuilding the Veterans Memorial Park. So uh, as of right now, that's the only cut that we've heard of that's gonna impact Arlington, but we'll certainly continuing to evaluate the list and you know our legislators have been uh, very forthcoming with information so we'll certainly keep the board apprised of any other uh, potential impacts related to the state's uh, revenue shortfall and then lastly I just want to welcome uh, you know publicly a few new employees uh, those being Charles O'Connell a new motor equipment operator in our public works department uh, Charles Newman, our new supervisor of building maintenance for town and schools. Uh, Vanita Hidri, the new treasurer's assistant. Uh, Stacy Carruth, the new director of the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. And then finally, uh, Gail Dixon, who will be backfilling in the town manager's office in the position vacated by uh, Julie Wayman. That is the budget position. So just wanted to say uh, welcome to those folks. We, you know, glad they're on the team. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And in that vein, do we have four new patrol officers coming out of the academy, or if I may, Mr. Chair? Please. Indeed, they graduated on Thursday and were sworn in by our town clerk on Friday morning. Okay, excellent, because I know I'm, we're all looking at the approximately 11 last year and this current year, so that um, I'm very, gratified to see that and I saw some posting somewhere that two of the four also were very active in the Arlington Girls and Boys, Arlington Boys and Girls Club, um, as well as two that um, don't have born in Arlington roots but uh, definitely bring other uh, facets experience to that. And then the second thing is just to um, let my colleagues know um, that, uh, and I'm sure you've seen it, that Save the Alwife Brook um, had the D new DCR commissioner, Commissioner Arrigo, and I apologize if I'm not saying his name correctly, no. uh, uh, come out to Arlington in the middle of one of the rainiest days about two and a half, three weeks ago, which I thought he would, his office would cancel, but they didn't. So it was a perfect opportunity to go down to the Alwife and see the, the various uh, combined sewer, sewer overflow CSOs um, down by the uh, homeless encamp encampment as well as, which is MWRAs, as well as the city of Cambridge and Somerville's, um, and uh, the debris that is still in the trees, and I won't go into it. I already stated before what that debris is. Um, so I, I commend the commissioner uh, for doing that. I do, uh, it was a meeting uh, between the commissioner, uh, David Stoff of Save the L.Y. Brook, coordinated it. Um, I unfortunately had an invitation, we couldn't attend, but I have had conversations with Mr. Feeney, the town manager, because during that um, uh, walk, uh, the commissioner certainly was interested in terms of uh, the, the town's position and possibly any partnerships um, between DCR, uh, responsibilities of DCR and or uh, responsibilities of things that should be done that might be um, a, a town DCR partnership and I also think that's a positive step in terms of when we're going forward advocating under a total uh, different umbrella the CSO Kim 001 through 004 sewer outfall so um, because Mr. Feeney has nothing else on his plate no uh, we, we uh, have uh, the target month of mid-February to mid-March of uh, reaching out to Commissioner Arrigo um, uh, 
bringing the, the town through the town manager and or any of his designees to answer that uh, question that the commissioner had as well as give the town through the town manager the opportunity to some improvements that we'd like to see and if there can be a partnership or, or something else. Um, so, uh, but I, I do appreciate similar to when, um, and I believe Mr. Helmuth, and I can't remember who else was there when Mr. Nagel notified us about the commissioner, of, I think had the, uh, Augustus that came out. We also had commissioner of DCR and um, I'm, I'm going to be working with the town manager and through the chair to uh, getting that direct connection between Commissioner Rigo and Mr. Feeney. And happy anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary, anniversary, Jordan. That's all my new business. <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just want to thank town staff and DPW, as always, for a job well done this weekend. Um, I, you know, snow hit us pretty hard here in Arlington. I drove to a hockey game in Revere yesterday, and I had eight inches in my yard, and we drove through Charlestown and Revere, and there was no snow on the grass. <laughs> so Arlington obviously had, got the brunt of the storm in this area, but, you know, the roads were fine, and, you know, everyone was hard at work, and, you know, I know that's, that's not an easy job. So I just want to thank uh, everyone for all their work this weekend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, happy anniversary to you and Jordan. And I uh, want to thank you also for putting on, for our next meeting, we're going to hear a presentation from Anna Litton regarding a potential reuse of the Fox Library, and the town is going to hopefully be engaged in a um, seeking a grant, um, if, if all goes well, for the reconstruction of that branch. But probably between now and then, um, the library is offering community forums, open public forums, uh, to receive input from the community. And there's uh, one coming up this Thursday night at 7 at the Fox Library, Saturday morning at 10 at the at Fox Library, and there's a Zoom one on January 17th. The library is also um, has a survey for all library users, um, and the, the response has been good, but they'd like to, to, to see it improve. That's going to be open for another week. So if you go on the, the town, the library website, you can participate in that survey. I had a meeting this morning. I, I've been serving as a board uh, designee to the Fox Reuse Committee, and um, uh, Ms. Litton's doing a great job leading that group, and, and, and we're going to hear a lot of exciting things and, and potential um, just the potential for that site, which uh, hasn't been improved since 1969 um, in terms of when it was um, rebuilt uh, from the East Branch, East Branch Library to the Edith Fox Library. So um, thank you for putting that on, and we look forward to hearing from her. I have to say congratulations, too. And I have to say to Mr. Hurd, I was wondering how much snow you got out in the heights, because I think we only got like four inches or something you know, in, in the east, and that's just it's always that kind of a difference. Well, not always, but a lot of times there's a huge difference between the east and the heights. My house is the highest house in Arlington at the top of the hill. So <laughs> it's always get the most snow and the most wind. Yeah. No new business. It was Thank reported you. that the rain snow line actually resided in Arlington for over an hour. Ooh, so you could, so our staff were reporting that you could move up and down the ave and see yeah. directly change from rain to snow as you approach the heights. Oh, we, you mean Mr. Hurd's house? Not to belabor the meeting, but we had a game against Cambridge, and we're like, you want to cancel this game? And the guy's like, we don't have any snow. <laughs> like, okay, I guess we're going to drive to the rink. And we thought that they were full of it because they had a short commute to the Cambridge rink, but they were right. There was no snow. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, my new business, a couple of items. I'd, I'd like to encourage the public to join us on Monday, Martin Luther King Day, the, uh, January the 15th, for the 36th annual Dr. Martin Luther King J. Birth, Jr. Birthday Observance. It's at Town Hall from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, there is a wonderful keynote speaker, Rashawn D. Hall, uh, who is an esteemed civil rights and criminal justice advocate, newly appointed president and CEO of the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts, and prior, previous to that served as the director of the Racial Justice Program at the ACLU of Massachusetts. I'm looking forward to that, and I hope the members of the community will join me. Yeah, more information is available on the AMLK Communities website at Arlington 
M-A-M-L-K dot org. And finally, as my uh, colleagues have outed me, as I said before, the meeting this happens to be maybe a wedding anniversary, so I think I'm just going to roll with it and say that all of us in public service know just how important the support of our families is to mm. what we do. And so to Jordan, I would say, after 14 years of marriage today and 24 years in love, thank you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Mr. Diggins. <laughs> and uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. We adjourn. <laughs>